So let's say that you've been creating and sharing valuable free content for a while. When does it finally become revenue, income, sales, clients for you? So that's what I want to address in this video. Uh, I received a question, and thanks to the person who asked it, you know who you are. Uh, it says, George, I share your philosophy on the creation of valuable free content. I've been blogging daily for almost two years, creating YouTube videos also and doing free webinars. I would do this work regardless, and I want to develop trust with my audience and ensure that I am inviting clients who are the right fit. However, sales have been slow. In your experience, what's the tipping point when your free content begins to translate into revenue? It's a really great question. And first of all, I, I just I have to honor the person who is being that consistent with their content, blogging daily, you know, making YouTube videos, doing free. Now, if you're watching this and you haven't started doing content, please don't be intimidated, don't be scared away. Uh, it is a process of building a muscle and you don't have to blog daily. You don't have to make videos all the time. You, it's not about how many you do necessarily, but it's about finding a rhythm that is personally sustainable for you. Maybe it's blogging once a week. Maybe it's blogging once every two weeks. I don't know. Maybe it's making a video a day or a video every two weeks. The rhythm that works for you is the, is the right rhythm for you. It's the right frequency for you, right? And the key is the consistency, which you've heard me say again and again, and I will say again and again until the end of time, that the consistency is what creates your growth. That's really important. It's not just, I've said before, of course, consistency equals reliability in your audience's mind. When you're consistent with your content, they think, oh, this is a reliable thought leader, reliable expert, reliable company, okay? But really, the consistency, the bigger benefit is actually for your own growth. You, you think you're smart right now, and you probably are, but you will get so much smarter faster when you create consistent content. I, if you were to talk to the George Cow of five years ago, three years ago, even a year ago, I think, you know, I think I am more knowledgeable about my field and I'm clearer about how I teach my, my, my strategies than I was even a year ago, certainly five years ago because the consistency of my content has made me smarter a lot faster. And because I'm smarter and a lot faster and I'm better at communicating than I used to be because of the practice of consistent content, uh, it's easier for me to attract clients, it's easier for me to draw an audience who wants to pay attention to me. All that stuff is because of consistency, of practice, okay? You can't get smart at communicating, of attracting people to you, being compelling. And I've said before, I don't try to be compelling. I don't try to be attractive. I simply practice. And in the practice, I naturally become attractive. I naturally become compelling. You see the difference? I, I'm not faking it till I make it. I'm not posturing to make myself look like a, an amazing expert or, you know, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an influencer. I'm not trying to become an influencer. I just naturally am an influencer because I practice consistently creating content, talking about things that I think are important, that I think will be helpful for you, et cetera. So to go back to the answer to the question of, well, George, when after all this writing or making videos or whatever you're doing, when do clients start contacting me and when do people start buying my products? Okay. So there is no tipping point. This is really, really important. Um, for me, I, I noticed that it was some, somewhere around six to 18 months. See, it's so, I, I couldn't, I couldn't pin, put a finger on it, but it's somewhere between six to 18 months for me anyway. For you, it may be three months. For you, it may be three years. So what is the difference? There are three factors that make the difference between whether it takes you three years or 30 years before people start contacting you, okay? Besides consistency, and maybe I should, that's number four, I guess, but besides consistency of, of content, authentic, relevant, consistent content, I talk about this all the time, but it's not just the content, right? You can be the most brilliant content creator in the world, and people still won't buy from you. You know why? 
It's your offerings. That is the difference. And it's how you are packaging your offerings that the, the, that the, the, um, makes the difference of why, whether your content is turning into revenue. So let's talk about this. Your content gives you the gift of your audience's attention, right? So that you are able to present your offerings to an a audience that's willing to even listen to you. Without, without, without your content, they don't care. They're, you're, just, you're just some company trying to market to them. You're just some huckster, right? Who, not you, but that's how people see these marketers, right? You're just a huckster of some company, some expert, some thought leader, some coach, some healer, some business, some product trying to sell itself, right? But with your consistent content, you become a trusted source. And now they're super willing to look at your offering. But your, if your offering isn't interesting to them, it doesn't matter how great your content is. They're not going to buy. They're not. Unless you really frame your offering as, please support me. If you really like my content, even if you don't like this product or service I'm offering, just please send me some money and I'll give you the service. Maybe you'll like it. <laughs> but see, and some people do that. And I have done that in the past to say, hey, you know what? Maybe you don't like this upcoming course I'm teaching, but please just to pay me the $60. If you like my content, just support me. And you, you might like the course anyway, right? You could, you could do that strategy and some people work and some people do it as a Patreon type of thing. Patreon.com, you can say, hey, if you like my content, just send me a couple bucks a month, you know? It just really helps, right? Every, it, every little bit helps and that's fine. My concern with that strategy, why I don't use that strategy myself, is it sounds beggy, <laughs> I guess. And I, I guess I'm kind of a purist when it comes to business. I want to sell you something that you actually want to buy, not because you're pitying me and, ah, oh, George is great with his content. Maybe I'll, I'll send him 60 bucks, whatever, you know, even though I don't care about his course, I'll send him 60 bucks. And, <laughs> and if you do that, thank you. I appreciate that support, honestly. Every little bit does help. Um, but it's not what I prefer. I prefer for you and me and everybody to sell something that your audience actually wants. Your audience says, I love you for your content, and I love this product and service you're offering. I, I actually want to buy it, not just, not just because I want to send you some money. Okay, so, um, so that's the first factor, is the resonance of your offering. Are you selling something they want? And it is so tricky here, because you created this offering because you want it, because you thought it was really cool. But for entrepreneurs, the more heart-based you are, the more visionary you are, the more you are in the danger zone of being in your own head and not in the world actually feeling the pain of your audience and understanding what they're really thinking about and therefore creating something that matches perfectly what they're thinking about what their pain is, and even what they're willing to spend money on. You might be matching what they're thinking and what their pain is, but you might not be matching what they're spending money on because they're like, oh, life coaching? Now, by the way, a lot of people buy life coaching these days, so this is maybe not a great of an analogy anymore. But five, ten years ago, people would be like, life coaching? Yeah, I, wanna, I, I want someone to talk to. I want to, to achieve certain goals. And I'll, but I'm just going to talk to a friend. I'm not going to pay for life I'm going to pay to talk to a friend. Why, why? I have the money. I have lots of money, but I'm not going to pay you to talk to you as a friend that I could just talk to, right? But now it's normal, right? Now paying for life coaching is totally you know, getting normal, thankfully. People pay, right? Um, but what, that's what I mean is that your offering might be framed in a way that they're not ready. The, the culture or your audience, at least, is not ready to take out their wallet and pay for that thing yet, even though they really much want it. They just don't understand about paying for it. Uh, another maybe silly example um, is I don't know um, uh, year, years ago right um, people never downloaded movies on the internet they're like movie why would I pay to download them I'll just go to Blockbuster that's where I get my movies or I just go to the movie theater right and now it's so normal for people to buy streaming video and movies they're like oh that's I don't go to Blockbuster Blockbuster's gone. 
You see what I mean? And, and movie theaters now have to like put on 3D and make things really spectacular for you to even go there, um, right? Or serve food that's really special or something. So, so the culture changes and people eventually are open to paying for energy healing or, or right? Energy healing used to be crazy to pay for. Now it's becoming more and more normal or um, whatever it is you sell that's kind of on the cutting edge, spiritual counseling, spiritual spirit. What do you, you want me to pay for spiritual coaching? And, and isn't that just something I go to my pastor for, for free? And yes, I'll tithe to the church because tithing to the church has been around as a way to spend money for hundreds of thousands, you know, maybe thousands of years, maybe, right? But paying an individual for spiritual coaching, that's still relatively new, right? And so you, you, might, you might be despairing and say, oh my God, George, that's exactly what I sell, spiritual coaching. Am, am I totally ahead of my time? So let's keep going, right? If your audience, if you at least get frame your coaching or your service or your product or your program in the way that your audience is thinking about what are they really thinking on a day-to-day basis about their problems and about what they want to solve and about the goals they want to achieve it's up to you to do those fan interviews as i've called them fan interviews conversations with your fans individual conversations to figure out their story so you can really speak in their language tell the stories that matter to them Okay. All right. So you at least need to get there. Okay. Even if let's say you sold spiritual coaching and pe- your fan loves you and yes, you were speaking in their language, but they're still not ready to pay for spiritual coaching. Yet, even though they have all, lots of money, they just, I, you know, kind of stingy. I don't want to pay for spiritual coaching yet. I'm, I've never done that before. Or I don't know anybody who has. Okay. I don't spend money. I spend money on lavish things that are, you know, let's say your audience was saying that. Okay. Now, Let's go to the next, the next factor, which is sampling. So first we have resonance. Are you resonating? Is, it, is how you're talking about your offering resonating in the language of your audience based on your fan interviews, what they're thinking about, what, what's really going on with them, rather than just what you're going on inside your own head, rather than just your own peak experience, your own aha moments, your own insights. That's fine for you. You, you resonate with yourself, but are you resonating with your fans? Chances are many of you aren't. Because you're a visionary, you're a heart-based, and so therefore you're in your own head. You, you, you and I have the greatest danger of being in our own head when we're heart-based and we're spiritual and we're visionary. Because we think we're so idealistic that we think that's the whole world. Oh, I have this idea, therefore everybody must have this idea because we're all one. And on a spiritual level, that's true. But we are practicing being in the third dimension where there's a great separation between egos and individual thoughts right? And, and you're still trying to, your spirit is trying to reconcile with, oh my God, that means I have to go out into the world and, and meld my thoughts with someone else's thoughts, right? So resonance is, is the first thing. The second one is sampling. I love your content. And I believe that uh, your spiritual coaching is being framed in a way that, yeah, that, that sounds like it does could solve my problem. But now you've got to get me to be willing to spend the abundance of money that I do have on your spirit, some of it on your spiritual coaching. How do you do that? You've got to give me a sample. Okay, so I'll, I'll use a um, an analogy. This might be a little bit silly analogy, but it really, uh, I think, y- y- think about this about your own offering. Let's say I'm I'm going to Costco. Costco is one of those warehouse you know stores that sells big packages of things. Now, okay, so let's say I like veggie burgers. Okay, I, I enjoy veggie burgers. I go to Costco and they're trying to sell me a 24 pack of veggie burgers. Okay, and a particular brand of veggie burgers, 24 pack. I like veggie burgers, but am I going to spend whatever dollars to buy a 24 pack of veggie burgers that I may or may not like that brand? And I'm not even sure I really like veggie burgers that much to spend 20, uh, buy a 24 pack. No. So that's why Costco is smart and they have an employee. In the, top, in the beginning of the aisle, the, uh, the start of the aisle, offering samples of veggie burgers to me. Wow, that's really tasty. So now I might actually buy that 24-pack, even though I, would, you know, I wouldn't otherwise buy it. Now, even though, even, so, so one first thing I'm going to ask you is, are you giving the samples of the thing you actually want to sell? Your content is not an actual sample of your service. This is huge. You know, just because you've been serving tons of content for years doesn't mean that 
people are now willing to buy your service, right? Because it's not an actual sample. It's, it's, it, if you were to blog a lot, right? That's a sample for them to buy a book maybe because writing, them reading the writing means that they're now willing to pay for reading more stuff. But to pay to talk to you is totally different. It's a totally different thing. So you got to give them a sample of the thing they actually, you actually want to sell them. So veggie burger, give me a sample of a veggie burger, not give me a sample of, uh, you know, a broccoli. It, it's a different thing, right? So are you giving samples, right? Are you giving samples? And secondly, and you might say, yes, George, I am offering complimentary coaching calls, but people aren't taking me up on that or people aren't buying it. Okay, fine. Then keep thinking of ways to give them the sample of what it's like to do that thing. So for example, no one's taking you up on your complimentary coaching sessions, but they're con consuming your content. Great. Can you put up an actual sample of a complimentary coaching session on video so that they can see what it's like to do a complimentary session with you? Do you see what I mean? You, you, you keep stepping to the sample, sample, sample. How can you sample, you know, give them a sample of what you want them to do next and then give them a sample of what you want them to do next. So that's my question for you. Are you giving them that, that sample? So back to the veggie burger example, right? Even if you give me a sample of a little tiny veggie burger bite, I'm still not going to maybe buy the 24 because that's too far of a jump, right? So what I would rather do is people to buy, can I buy like two patties, maybe three patties of veggie burger, before, not the 24? So I would rather go to Whole Foods, right, and buy a, a two-pack, three-pack of that brand of veggie burger, try it out before I decide if I'm going to buy the 24-pack. So instead of selling me, like you're, you're on a complimentary coaching session, I'm, I'm there with you now. I'm, I decided to sign up for the complimentary coaching or, or maybe even the one session coaching. Uh, I buy it. But now you're trying to sell me on a six month, you know, weekly coaching. Now you're trying to get me to go from sampling that veggie burger bite to buying the 24 pack. That's a really far jump. I'm not ready for that. Even though I love you, I love your content. So help me, help me, please help me step in rather than make that huge jump. So sampling is, is really uh, helpful for that. Okay, and then finally, visibility. You have a resonant offer. You're giving people adequate samples of what you want them to do next. But now you don't have enough people who are seeing your samples and seeing your content. And that's really one of the problems. Maybe you have been blogging daily for two years, but how many people are reading it? A couple hundred people a month? Maybe that's not enough people. If, if you first worked out the resonance and the sampling, then you need to work out the visibility, right? That's where I really believe in Facebook ads. Are you spending $30 a month on Facebook ads? If you're not doing that, I, I urge you, I encourage you to please, please commit to me that you will start spending $30 a month this month on Facebook ads, even if you don't have anything to sell yet. That's what I've been telling everybody, including my clients, including I'm creating a secret, pro secret project right now, not revealing it to all of you because I want to build it without my current audience. I'm going to build it as if I was anonymous. Secret project. It's actually a spiritual type of thing. Um, you know, sharing my spiritual insights or whatever. Whoever cares about it, right, we'll, 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 we'll find that. Um, I am building it from scratch. I don't have anything to sell there yet, but I'm spending at least $30 a month right now on, on Facebook ads for that new secret project to show all of you that I, I walk my own talk too. If I were starting from scratch, right? $30 a month. Are you spending it on that? No, seriously. Are you tell me in the comments below, are you spending 30? Even if you have nothing to sell yet, you need to build your tribe, build your audience before you have something to sell. And if you already have something to sell, well, you, you need to, you, you need to spend $30 a month even more. You, maybe you need to spend more than $30. I spend two to $300 a month on this business right now just distributing my content, not even trying to sell you anything, right? To sell you my next course, I spend an, another $100 to $200 a month. So total of three to 500 is what I spend a month on Facebook ads. That's because I already have an audience. I already have a business. If you don't have that kind of money yet, spend $30 a month, even if you have nothing on your no income in your business yet please please spend thirty dollars a month a dollar a day on facebook ads and learn to do it practice doing it it's not enough just to say i, I tried george i tried thirty dollars a month I, nothing happened 
it's not because Facebook ads didn't work. It's because you don't know how to use it. You know, and of course, if you want to learn from me, I have a course on Facebook ads. You can take that course and figure out how to do it. But $30 a month to get visibility before you have a business. And once you have a business, once you're selling something, definitely 30 a month, maybe more to really get people interested in buying, getting to trying your samples and then finally hiring you or buying your product or buying your whatever it is you want to sell them. Okay. So why, when does content become sales, become revenue, become clients? When you, when your offering is packaged in a way that's resonating with your audience and when you help them step into that offering by doing samples, sampling, you know, something that they can low risk, something to try out. And then finally, you got to have enough visibility for your content and for your offerings before someone has seen it enough to, to, to finally say, you know, I, I got to decide on this because I've seen it five or 10 times now. Yes, I, yes or no. And they say no, that's not saying no to you. They're just saying no to that one offering for this moment. They might say yes to your next offering. So I hope this is helpful. Um, any questions you have below, uh, please uh, let me know. And thank you. Uh, Luis uh, commented here, right here on the, on the live video. It says, I did this when I owned a gym, $30 a month on Facebook ads, and it worked very well. Thank you, Luis. I appreciate your, um, your comment there. So uh, thank you, Jill, for joining me here as well. So um, any questions you have, let me know in the comments below. I hope this is helpful. And uh, go for it. Go and continue to be consistent with your content. And now work on the resonance of your offering whether you are doing sampling so that people can step in to what you, what kind of action you would love for them to take. And then are you getting enough visibility for both your content and for your offerings? I wish you well.